All right, we're here with the creators of The League. Talk to me about the non-scriptedness of the show, and I guess the casting first. Like, how do you get actors and comics and those people that can actually do it? Because I'm sure it's tough for some people that only know scripted. So you talk about that a little bit? I think one of the things that, for us, why we wanted to do the show is there were these amazing pieces of talent out there that we were so excited about working with that when we were working on other projects for whatever reason, we never had the space to use them. And it made perfect sense. All these people that we would go to the UCB Del Close Marathon and sit there at 2 o'clock in the morning in a hot basement in New York that for sure was like a giant fire hazard. Um, <laughs> but you sit there and you see these amazing people and you say these people should work together on a show and 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 Jeff can speak more about uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm but we wanted to sort of structure it like that. No, and on Curb, you know, uh, we get amazing actors but Larry's just is obviously a little older than these guys so we don't, there wasn't a lot of use for um, sort of younger, really talented improv guys and so when Jackie uh, came up with the idea for the show uh, we're like, oh my god, this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to grab these amazingly talented performers, and and as long as we do it sort of the curve style, which is a structured outline, um, which so the stories are already funny, and then let these guys be brilliant on top of that, and it makes it feel very real and very authentic, which is exactly what we were trying to capture. Okay, and you know, the first season, now that that's behind you, and the show's a hit, and people are loving it, Less pressure or more pressure to, as you keep going? I think the pressure yeah, is yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, self-imposed yeah. every week, every day. Same pressure, uh, yeah. I think for us, it's just we want to make a show that we're really proud of and a show that we're really um, passionate about and that we would watch ourselves. And I think um, Jeff's a little bit of a comedy snob. Our cast, for <laughs> sure, if they're not, they deserve to be. And I think I, for Jeff and I, we would be embarrassed to bring them um, a script that wasn't as thought out or as, as we had put as much work into it as we did season one. So I think we just always feel like we need to give them, it, it's on us to give them good material to play with. Okay, and is it safe to assume you, you knew the sports world really well before you did this, or have you learned a lot since um, you've gotten into it? It's safe to assume that the idea for the show came from a vacation in the French Alps on Christmas Eve during a very romantic, very um, extravagant dinner. And Jeff was in more than one fantasy football league that year. And I was in the Super Bowl both. So, so dinner time in France was game time uh, back in the States. Now, mind you, there was absolutely nothing he could do to affect the outcome. Lineups were locked. So the players he'd chosen to play, he had to know. But I kept baking stomach sickness from this nice restaurant, and I would go out into the snow and call. And this is in the pre-Skype days. <laughs> and by this is a very, very real story. And so I can tell you the name of the restaurant. Okay. I can tell you which corner he hid behind. I trying to so hiding in the snow to try and just... You're right, I can't affect him. Just to check and see how I'm doing. And she basically figures out what I'm doing, and she laughs because she was in a fantasy league, too. And she goes, this is a show. And that's where, and that's where the idea for the show came from, is that, you know, there's the things you want to be doing and the things you're supposed to be doing. And arguably, he's supposed to be with his fiance having Christmas Eve dinner in the French Alps. But really, as much as I'd like to believe he loves me, he <laughs> wanted desperately to know whether or not he was going to win both Super Bowls. And by the way, so the story has an amazing happy ending because we came up with the show, and I did win both those Super Bowls. Nice, so, nice. Still win -win. And I still married him. <laughs> <laughs> And um, selling this to FX, um, was that a, a hard sell because um, just no, the way the show is? It was, it's great. I mean, we've Jeff and I have both known uh, Nick Rad at FX for Long countless time. years. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we basically called up Nick and said, we have this script. Um, do you want to do it? We are available a little bit later this summer. Um, we'd only want to do it if you guys have space to put it on this fall. Um, pretty tall order. Yeah. And yeah, Nick, so this, this was June. Yeah, and Nick read it, and immediately, not only is not only is Nick in a fantasy football league, Nick also saw the universality of the show, as did all the exe other executives there. And John Landgraf, being a parent of young children, really got the stories that I was trying to tell through Jenny, and and, um, and we we really felt we found the perfect network. I, I don't I don't well, we know thought, that we thought like oh my god I can't believe they said yes to this. We're gonna shoot a pilot in July. We're gonna shoot a series September September twentieth. We started shooting to be on the air October 29th. We're like, they're crazy. And then we started to do it, and we realized, oh, they're not crazy. Yeah. We're crazy. This is impossible. <laughs> it was honestly, it was like meeting someone on a Thursday, getting married on a Friday, and having a baby on a Saturday. Oh my that, God. Was, that was sort of the process of last year. So this year we've have had a little more time to sort of to, to shoot and, 
and edit. That's amazing. And what can we expect to see in season two? I already heard a little bit about the Vegas episode just being off the hook, and I think I have the screener at home, so I'll have to watch it when I get Vegas home. Vegas is fun. I mean, it was a great way to start things off. Whenever uh, when we initially came up with the idea for the show, we really, really wanted to set an episode in Vegas because fantasy football drafts have become basically annual state-sanctioned bachelor parties. I mean, it is the perfect excuse. You're, there's no more friends getting married. You have no reason to go, and somehow <laughs> fantasy sports gives you That's an excuse great. to go. And um, so it seemed only natural that it'd be set there. And, you know, really with 13, it's fun for us to have the opportunity to go into these guys' workplaces, to go back into their histories of who they've dated in the past, who they have the debt is against. And, uh, and I think the big thing this year is we start out with an open spot in the league. And everybody, everybody's got an opinion about who should fill that spot. Um, especially Jenny, who is tired of being the woman behind the man and would like to have her own team. Uh -huh. So, and she's better than all those guys anyway. So she's angling for a spot. And ruxham has got his own issues at home, which is that he's got to get, he's got to get his brother-in-law in. This guy Rafi, played by Jason Manzukas, who's hilarious, and so he doesn't particularly like him, but he's getting pressure from his wife, so he's got to get them. And so everyone's trying to fill that spot with their own person. Oh my God! Well, can't wait to see the new season.